But living in these, uh, oh my f***ing god. Vinny, you gotta shut up. I cannot, I can't do this. Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good. Tonight on the show, we're gonna do a couple recipes by request, although it was a bit of a vague request. This is an extra charity, extra charity, extra life charity donation reward fulfillment video. So, what is that, you may ask? Every year we do fundraising for extra life. Here's a picture of that, or there's a link. I, there's no link. There could be a link. Here's a link to that fundraiser. You don't have to do it during a certain time, but you could. And one of the things that we do is that for people who donate a certain amount, we guarantee that we will make their specific request on the show. Uh, and by guarantee, I say that we'll do it, but there's no explicit legal guarantee, so don't at me. This one is for Claypo, who requested some Eastern African recipes. That's right. He didn't ask for a specific thing, but just kind of gave me some general uh, guidance. So, tonight I'm going to show how to make Doro Wat and Ot Kilt. Doro Wat is a Ethiopian chicken stew, and the Ot Kilt is kind of a potato, cabbage, carrot side dish. And Ethiopian food's really interesting in that it's typically served on a big piece of bread called injera, which is like a fermented sponge bread. And instead of eating with a fork and a knife, you kind of just like scoop little bits up with the bread. I am not going to make that bread. I am never going to make that bread. So once again, don't at me. You can at my dogs though, because they won't shut the f up. I will take this moment to give the big disclaimer, which is, I don't know what I'm doing. Don't use this recipe as an authority on anything. I have no claim to anything, and I'm dumb. If I do something wrong, in either of these recipes. You can let me know. You could put it in the comments. You could tell me I like that kind of feedback. But I am in no way saying that I know how to do anything, ever. I had some coffee before we started, and I think I'm gonna have some more coffee. And I'm sure this will not make anybody happy. Probably nobody will be happy to know that this is room temperature black coffee. <laughs> It doesn't bother me. So I was uh, I was looking at these recipes. I think that there's a, a common common motif or opinion that is often expressed on the internet, which is that recipes that require you to caramelize or cook down onions, wow, they are they are just incorrect. Where they're like cook the onions for 10 minutes until well caramelized. You know, anybody who's ever cooked an onion in their life knows it takes a little bit more than 10 minutes. Oftentimes it takes like a an hour. This recipe, the recipe I'm vaguely following, it has like five steps and each one of those steps is like, just keep cooking those onions. <laughs> but I am gonna start cooking onions before I do anything else because these gotta get cooking. It's gonna take time. Yeah, so these are three onions. Uh, these are just yellow onions, which if you have a uh, food processor, you can simply throw them in there and kind of get like a chunky paste. But I uh, do not have a food processor. And in fact, I am the food processor. And so I'll just be chopping them, you know, kind of finely, but also not taking too much care because we're just gonna cook them down. And uh, you may notice that there are in fact, six halves of an onion for this recipe and you can find all the letters for those six halves of an onion in the acronym, or not, no, the mnemonic phrase. Mnemonic? Pneumatic? Not pneumatic. It's certainly not pneumatic. Um, uh, oh, oh no. I, I default to oh no a lot, but I'm gonna stick with that. Oh no. It's, uh, oh no. <laughs> it's officially now. All right, I chopped enough onions to get some tears in my eyes. Jesus. Uh, let's get these onions going. So there's uh, an ingredient that I believe is Ethiopian and it is, uh, I'm sorry if I can't pronounce it correctly, Niter Kibbe? Kibbe? But essentially what it is is ghee, which I have here, this clarified butter, that has been infused with spices. I am way too lazy to do that infusion. But you know, I, I again, like in I, my process of like, what do you want to call it? My process of like looking at different recipes and deciding what I'm gonna do, what I'm not gonna do. A lot of the spices that are typically used to flavor that infusion will appear in this dish anyways. So in my book, 
I'm already putting the spices in. I'm not gonna put the spices in the butter, cook things in the butter, and then put the spices in the butter. I'm sure that tastes great. I ain't got time for that. that that's all, that's, that's all I'm saying. Okay, here's our big old pile of unnies. When will they become dunnies? Hopefully before two hours from now, because that's basically what the recipe said. So I'm not even letting the ghee melt or anything. I'm just throwing them in there, wishing them well. And I've got some new spatchies. I just like shouted new spatchies, didn't I? That was like at the top of my lungs. New spatchies! Some guy on Twitch, Zipnipotent, was like, hey Phil, these are on sale and they're good. And also Kenji uses them. I was like, all right, I'll buy them. I didn't need them, but I got them. So here they are, good value. Okay, so those are gonna caramelize and we'll just we'll just stir them around for time to time, it'll take forever. All right, we're gonna make a fresh spice mix, which is try hardy. Okay, that's when I was like, no, I'm not making that butter. I was like, okay, well, I'll, I'll make the spice blend. And the, you may have actually heard of this. It's one of the more popular things that I think of, has come from the Eastern African region as it is popularized in the West. And I think it's partially because it's fun to say. This is bearberry seasoning, which is B-E-R-B-E-R-E. Bearberry, bearberry. It's kind of, kind of like a curry powder, kind of like a chili powder. But the key thing is that it's spicy. So that's right, John. You may be uncomfortable eating tonight's food. Using the powers of movie magic, I measured out some seasoning beforehand, and I will tell you what they are from memory. That's right, I totally memorized the exact amounts. There are two teaspoons of coriander seeds, one teaspoon of cumin seeds, four green pods of cardamom, four cloves, one teaspoon of black peppercorns, two allspice berries. And so we will get our skillet heated up over lowish heat and we're gonna toast the seeds. In addition, we are going to use some chilies, some dried chilies, and here they are. I have five, and these are chili arbols, very hot. If you would like to be nice to John, you can pull out the seeds and the membranes inside. Well, I'm gonna go for trying to get most of them. How much do I love John? Count the pepper seeds of which I am pulling out. That's right. Impossible to count. So too is it impossible to count how much I love John. Right, and we'll toast those up with these seeds. Ooh, look at that. Wow, new tools. Can't scratch a pan with these. I'll remind everyone that when you toast <coughs> things that are spicy, it makes it hard to breathe. So just uh, be aware of that. There's those onions chugging along, making their way downtown. Downtown Caramelizationville. Okay, we do have other seasonings for the spice mix, and that includes three tablespoons of paprika. I used Hungarian. There is a teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of fenugreek powder, one quarter teaspoon of freshly ground nutmeg, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, and I think that might be it. Today, I think I'm gonna use leg quarters. I bought this pack specifically, thought it was fun because they, had, they called it leg quarters, but then they just threw in some drums. <laughs> I think there's some more underneath, so. You could also use a whole chicken cut up, or if you're a, a real big weenie, like the biggest weenie there ever was, you can use boneless meat. Not gonna taste the same. Bones do add flavor to this type of dish. I am going to potentially experiment with this tonight. I love the flavor of the bones in the thing. It's kind of a pain in the ass to eat it off the bone. So I'm gonna try to, I think, clean the meat off the bones and then just put it all in there. So, kind of the best of both worlds. I can fish out the bones later. We'll see. All right, I'm satisfied with the toastiness of this here spice mixture. You can see some of the chilies are a little charred. We've got lots of nice fragrance. When things start to get nice and aromatic, that's when you know you're on the right, the right track. So we will let this cool. I keep turning the heat down on the onions. We, we continually stir them as we continue to caramelize them. If, if things are looking dry, we can add more ghee. It's not looking dry to me. And we'll start working on chicken. And I'm gonna start cutting up this chicken. What I'm doing is, you know, like it's extra work. So certainly you could simply just go through and chop your chicken to your liking. I mean, probably like the easiest thing you could do is just like get a big old cleaver and start whacking, whacking away. But I'm gonna try to, to debone most of this meat simply because I prefer to eat it that way in this application. Totally fine if you wanna leave in the bones and just eat it around the bone. So I will be doing that for a while. So yeah, I'm gonna be chopping chicken for a bit. Okay, it's been some amount of time. I couldn't really tell you how long it's been. So we're gonna get a couple cloves of garlic. Look at this chicken. Oh, and by the way, uh, the whole reason we cut it up into this bowl 
is that we're gonna hit it with some lemon juice. The recipe says to throw this chicken, toss it in lemon juice, and leave it out for at least 30 minutes. Ooh, exciting, it's chicken. Because I'll give that a quick toss. You can, I cut up most of the meat into bite-sized pieces, and I left the big bones intact so that we can stew them. Looks good. So a couple cloves of garlic, which I am going to quick chop. If you want to smash or finely mince it, that's fine. Chopped is fine with me. Into that goes. I'm gonna go ahead and put in some uh, butter. The recipe that I was looking at, I think it uses ghee, olive oil, and butter. But maybe we'll just use ghee and butter. It suggested one tablespoon at this point. And that's probably to just keep, keep your, uh, Everything cooking in here. Butter and ghee for a depth of flavor. Clarified and not. Okay, so here's our ginger. Actually, actually, let's uh, let's pound that ginger. And this will ensure that we don't have uh, too, too much of a, a bite in our ginger. Okay, there's our ginger, about a tablespoon, thereabouts. We'll continue to stir and let this cook for a bit. Okay, let's finish up that spice blend. Get our grinder plugged in. All right, so there's our cooled toasted spices. Smells amazing. Visually inspect it, looks pretty well ground up. It's a spicy smell. All right, so we will finish this by putting it into a jar just so it's easier for me to mix. There's our already ground spices and that's our mix, so we'll just give it a, a thorough mixin'. All right. To me, it smells like an extremely spicy garam masala. This is getting pretty brown. You can see the onions are nicely caramelized. So I'm gonna put in another two tablespoons of butter. Nice healthy dish. And as this melts, I'm going to add in our berberry. Berberry. Berberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberberber
the at kilt. At kilt. Okay, let's uh, let's start making our side. I'm actually going to use this skillet, which has kind of the remnant seasoning of the Burberry that we made. I think that'll be fine. I think it'll be, maybe it will give it a kiss, a, a light smooch of spice flavor. And I also just had some butter hanging out, so a little bit of butter. We'll do that, a little bit of olive oil as well. And we will start with four carrots. I have peeled them and we will slice them. You can see I had different sized carrots. A lot of times I will chop them in half and then split the thick end so that I have essentially three pieces of the carrot that are roughly the same size. And we will slice it up and we will fry them in our oil and butter. We'll probably run out of room in this pan. I, I don't care. We'll make it work. We're gonna use half an onion. Half of this onion. So we'll just slice that as well. And after the carrots have fried briefly, we will add the onion and we will peel some potatoes. These are yellow potatoes. You of course could use any kind of potato that you like. I'm just gonna be peeling potatoes here for a minute. So I just sauteed the carrots for a couple minutes. We'll go ahead and get our onions going. We'll let this go for just a minute here and we will add some seasoning. Meanwhile, I will chop some garlic. The garlic's optional, but I don't believe in optional garlic, so I'll definitely add some of that. And then our other ingredient will be cabbage. The amount of cabbage that you put in is up to you. I'm probably just gonna use a half a head, but you can certainly add more if you would like. What a weird head of cabbage. And thinly slice. Okay, there's that. Okay, let's get some seasoning going. Very simple seasoning. Very, very simple. We're gonna use some ground cumin. Just like a once over like that. Just a little bit of ground ginger, or of course you could use fresh ginger. I don't wanna f with any more <laughs> fresh ginger tonight. And then turmeric, and that's it. We will of course add salt later, and we'll get that going. Gotta toast it up. We'll get our other ingredients going in there soon. Let's go ahead and put in these guys. Basically the idea when you're cooking these is that the vegetables themselves should release some liquid as you cook them, and then you kind of cook it down into that liquid. But if anything's looking dry, or you get things sticking to the bottom, for example, you can add a little bit of water as you go. So there is absolutely no room for my potatoes, so we'll cook it until there's room for my potatoes, which I am now going to chop. I would say cut them into the size of potatoes that you would prefer to eat. Just chopping potatoes. All right, I've been cooking down my veggie mix, and you can see that I've made room in the pan because the vegetables have shrank when I cook them. Get my potatoes going in here. And now the pan will be truly crowded. To me, it should be a little bit more yellow. I'm just gonna add some more turmeric now on the potatoes, and we'll continue to cook that in signature PGC style of a crowded pan. Pretty inefficient way to cook. That's probably gotta go for maybe 30 minutes. We'll see. But basically I'll be cooking it, flipping around the pan, moving things around, but I don't think that's very compelling to watch on YouTube. So, see you in a bit. Okay, update on our veg. There it is. It's starting to get there. We're almost done. I'm basically telling by the potatoes, you can see I can push into that potato, but still a little al dente. And absolutely, this cries out for some salt. I added a little bit of salt already. It needs more. Basically, I've been hopping it around in the pan like so, and periodically adding water as necessary. Here's our eggs. One thing you can do to make the eggs taste better is pierce them a few times with forks, or a fork rather. That should help it absorb some of the salt and we'll incorporate that. So since we're almost done, basically like the eggs just go for a couple minutes. They're already cooked. You're just trying to get some flavor on them. And we are almost there. See you soon. All right, let's eat. So I'm going to grab some of this, kind of do one of these. And remember, you would typically eat this on bread. So it's kind of weird how we're doing it. And here is our Dora Watt with Atkilt. Looks pretty good to me. Let's try it. A potato. Delicious. So good. Very, very simple. Wonderful. Try some chicken and sauce. It's good. It's like simultaneously very familiar, but also like not quite any of the other things that it reminds me of. So it's a little weird, but I do think it's tasty. I also want to try an egg. Egg in the sauce. It's good. Our version has very, very strong kind of like 
dried pepper flavor. And it is supposed to be spicy and like taste like that, but that's most of what I get. It's kind of cayenne paprika type flavor, but it's also kind of curry-like. So I like it. I think it's good. Pretty tasty. So Claypo, I hope you enjoyed that episode. It was for you. Thank you for your generous donations to charity. And we'll see you next time on PGZ. Happy cooking. And that's how you do it. Toodles.